So you're asking yourself, you know, where does the 2022 real estate market uh, seem to go towards? What's going to be happening? Uh, what are the predictions? What do you have to look out for in 2022 when it comes to real estate? And is it a good year uh, for someone to invest in? We just got you covered. What's up, everyone? My name is Dujesh, and for those of you that don't know, I'm a real estate agent, broker, principal agent, call it whatever you want. Um, but I've been in the industry for the past nine to ten years. I have a holistic view of real estate from sales, rentals, as well as sectional title management. Today's video basically going to be more along the lines of my thoughts, um, also predictions on where the 2022 real estate market in South Africa might go, as well as some factors um, that may have uh, influenced buyers um, as well as sellers. So without rambling on, let's get straight into it. So the very first thing we've got to realize is that we've been coming from an industry um, where the past two years was greatly affected by the pandemic. Um, 2020 really saw, uh, probably like your fourth quarter of 2020, really saw a lot of sales start increasing in the real estate market. Um, that's obviously because of the repo rate um, as well as the interest rate that was given as well. Um, I think it was about 7% in 2020 and that's very favorable. So your prime being 7%, meaning your repayments and your interest rate that that obviously you get on your home loan is going to be much lower um, that was very favorable for buyers uh, in 2020 and that obviously pushed over into 2021 and basically what we're seeing is we're still seeing a 7.25 percent repo rate at the moment um, which is still very favorable in the current market still very favorable for buyers uh, because prior to that it was sitting at about nine to ten percent and uh, you know that's a big shift and a big change in your repayments and installments so based on um, some of the reports if you, if you see some of the news reports the repo rate is still between 7 to 7.25 um, and it's still a favorable market for the buyers so i think overall this still favors the buyers favors an individual that is looking to purchase property an individual that is actually really looking uh, maybe to buy their first home, maybe as an investment, but um, that interest rate is very favorable for buyers at the moment. Uh, it's been the lowest in a, quite a number of years. Um, and I think a lot of buyers buying now, if you buy uh, with that interest rate, um, you know, you're going to have a significant decrease in your repayments as opposed to getting anything between nine to 10%. Second thing also is that having a low interest rate would be very good and that means is that when you get a home loan, you must obviously ask the bank to lock in your interest rate. Yes, that is something that you can do that is locking in your interest rate. So if you were to get, let's just say, prime plus one, so 7.25 plus one percent and gives you 8.25 percent in your home loan, ask the bank to lock that in. And the reason being is that when we have a shift or change, so if at any point if there was an increase in the interest rate from maybe 7.25 to 9 percent or something later on, you are locked in at a lower interest rate. The downside to this is that you could obviously see a decrease in the interest rate and um, that would obviously you know affect your home loan because now you've got a probably 8.25 percent and uh, maybe it drops to six percent so you won't be able to capitalize or take advantage of that decrease in the interest rate which will obviously decrease your home loan repayments um, but very very good to get in if you get something very low to lock it in so at least you know for the period in which you're paying you're obviously going to pay that set amount based on that interest rate. Number three, we're also going to look at the factors of different areas and emerging markets. So in South Africa, what I've seen as a real estate agent is generally between 
that 850 to 1.5 1.6 million rand mark it's kind of like the sweet spot where a lot of people are still buying and transacting in that market now i know a lot of people cannot afford in that price bracket but those with a steady income with a reasonable amount of income earning maybe between the regions of 15 to about 30,000 can still buy within that price bracket at 850 to uh, 1.7 um, mark um, and this, this is the area that a lot of the investors first-time home buyers really look into so if you um, really look at the emerging markets a lot of places for example Belito are actually catering accommodating those sort of um, development prices so the developments are coming out with apartments within that price bracket um, to make it really easy for people to get into obviously we've got to take into account that in South Africa the poverty line is there there's a lot of people that earn way below the you know the, the, the average salary um, or the base salary um, so so we need to be uh, be mindful that uh, not a lot of people can afford a house uh, in South Africa fourth thing that we need to look at and my prediction is that more people are going to start using is the FLISP subsidy um, obviously if you earn between three and a half to about twenty two thousand um, that's your gross salary you are obviously going to uh, get a subsidy obviously there's a lot of other factors um, you know you got to have dependents you got to be a first-time home buyer but these are all factors in which the government will subsidize you or give you information um, these are the, the uh, qualifying criteria for the government to issue you a subsidy on that so that's very 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 important now you're going to look at some of the other uh, things that obviously shape this year so judging what we've looked at we've looked at the interest rate the prediction is the interest rate is going to stay the same um, and that's good for people to obviously lock in your interest rate the home buyer subsidy is very very important um, for a lot of the people who can't really uh, you know afford a deposit so prediction is that my prediction is that more people might use um, you know the home buyer subsidy and then the prediction of obviously the emerging markets coming up I feel there's going to be a lot more emerging markets within that price bracket or that price uh, category that um, you know developers are going to be looking at because like I said when you get that 1.7 million and above it's very difficult um, you know to sell that to a client or very difficult to like explain um, or get people to buy within that price bracket so um, a population in South Africa it's kind of like saying if 65 million people so you know reside in South Africa uh, only a fraction of that can actually afford between 850 to 1.7 and then anything above that is a fraction of that fraction so it really brings down the population and the number of people that can actually afford within that price bracket so um, that's that's also something that I'm looking at and I think it's going to be really big going forward is that emerging markets something else that I'm going to see going forward and I think is really important is a lot of sectional title uh, units more and more people are moving over into these sectional title apartments these townhouses um, flats or whatever you want to call it um, but all sectional title meaning shared uh, living a community living with other people around you um, that's you know emerging for the past 15 years in South Africa but as of recently there's a lot of developments going around and um, because people are so busy with work and traveling um, you know, people just want to be safe especially with crime in South Africa um, that's very important for them um, and I think a lot more people are going to be moving towards this as opposed to a freestanding house um, so that may leave the housing market or the freestanding market uh, I would say saturated as people would want to sell and move over so my prediction is a lot more developments will be coming up a lot more people will be moving towards the uh, real estate uh, sectional title living obviously from an investment point of view those that actually have money um, in real estate um, investment so those that have money to invest in in real estate would obviously capitalize on the low interest rate to invest but they're also going to be looking at affordability criteria because people are still recovering from COVID. so my prediction is that the rent is or the rentals are kind of gonna kind of be slightly lower than market value 
um, people are going to want to rent out their places as soon as possible, as quick as possible, and obviously make it affordable for others, um, as opposed to having an empty place that's going to, you know, take their money uh, every month. So um, my prediction is that I think that the rental market might see a decrease uh, in the rental prices depending on that market. So for example, if you take the Gateway area, the new town center um, in, in Shanghai and in Durban, um, a one bedroom could go anything from nine and a half to 10,000. But, uh, you know, obviously because of affordability and the way things are, maybe it could go at eight and a half thousand. Um, and that's obviously just based on people recovering from COVID and affordability factors as well, uh, where owners are more mindful that, you know, half loaf is better than none, you know. So they rather gain some sort of rental income, maybe decrease that and be open for some negotiation. Right, so that was just a quick video on my thoughts and predictions in the real estate market. I'm not going to go any more, any further. Um, it's just basically my uh, thoughts and some points on what to capitalize in 2022.